My name is Sanal Idamaruku. I live in Finland in Helsinki. By birth, I'm coming from India. I was born in southern India, Kerala. Most of my life, I was living in New Delhi. My passion and what I am known for, my activities for the spread of scientific attitude, the spirit of inquiry, uh, especially in India, where the large majority of the people are superstitious, bound by traditions, and who are living in perpetual fear of the paranormal. I know how deeply superstitious India is and how big a population under influence of these kind of things. It's 1.4 billion people now. So I found the importance of educating the Indian population to help. I mean, I, it's not really education. I want to get them thinking for themselves. So Indians have a tendency to believe in miracles, uh, no matter what religion it is. He elaborated the whole thing. The first three minutes, I would start getting pain. And this pain will never leave me in my life. Uh, the, the, the ultimate pain a person can ever have. I will start getting. So then after three minutes, I will collapse. Then it's not reversible. Next three minutes, I will die. It cannot be revived. I said, I accept the challenge. And I was only worried about two things. Number one, I discussed with the toxic experts. I was not afraid of magic, but he could use toxic poison. stuff. Yeah, poison. Mm. He could simply use poison. Maybe chloroform in front of my nose and I would, okay. I would collapse. And, you know, for a moment, if I collapse, that's enough for him to show victory. So when, I, when we came to the place, I deliberately, I, I decided to sit at a different place. Because not that the place officially set, to, set for me. Mm. I said, no, I would sit there. Uh, because I was making all these precautions. Then he had a long peacock feather. He wanted to show it in front of my nose. I said, no, because I was afraid that he would use chloroform. And I had a toxic expert in the place who has uh, immediately who could give me anti-toxic medicines. They all started chanting these mantras and I mean, singing songs and there's a fire made, mustard was thrown in, I mean, that's all the ritual. Then he made a dove of me, voodoo, huh. and uh, then uh, make like a human figure, like a doll, and he wanted me to touch it. Okay, I touch it. Then he cut it with a knife. So my internal organs should degenerate then. And then he, some blood kind of thing comes out because he put some color apparently and comes out of that. He said, it's all getting damaged. Fear, I mean, that's what he was trying to sell. If I was believing in, I mean, the power of black magic, I would die just because of fear mm. and I could get a heart attack. I mean, that kind of an atmosphere he made, mm. all sound and you know, it was really high drama. I mean, yeah, this, theater. Yeah, yeah, real theater he made. Finally, when everything collapsed, I mean, there was a countdown going, 10 minutes, 5 minutes, 1 minute, and well, it was all over. And all the journalists were hearing and they all came to me and I found him sitting in this little darkness I mean, after the, because nobody cared for him at that time. Mm. But some televisions went to him, some journalists went to him and asked, what happened? Why did you? He said, he has some protection powers, but he would die in 24 hours. <laughs> okay. The next 24 hours, some other journalist reached him and he said, three days, he would die. <laughs> By coincidence, if I had a heart attack, <laughs> he would have made it. <laughs> I was very careful not to make any accident or anything, <laughs> because he would claim success. Uh, there was a, a church in Mumbai, uh, mainly by the Govan migrants to Mumbai. They were running this church. There was a prayer going on when I reached there, and after that I was given the opportunity. Then I found it very easily. I went behind the wall and found that there was algae, fresh algae growing, green algae growing on the back side of it. I found there was a cloth drainage pipe, which was going to the main drainage from the toilet. I collected a small sample and sent for chemical analysis. 
And later I got the result also before the evening television program. It was full of E. coli bacteria, much higher than human tolerance. Apparently, I mean, it's very clear that it's coming from the toilet. The Bishop of Mumbai telephoned the television studio and said that the program should be stopped because it's very, of course, it was convincing because every day a thousand people visited this church for the, to see this miracle. I mean, the next day onwards, there was not a single person visiting this holy place. The miracle was over. It's simply over from that night. The channel refused to stop it, rather invited the bishop to join the discussion. The bishop came to the discussion. And then there was a debate between the bishop and me. And on the fundamentals of the miracle mongering, I said, I mean, the whole problem is the, the miracle mongering of the Catholic Church. Because they, they need two miracles for anybody to become a saint. And they have 10,000 saints, which means they have sanctioned 20,000 miracles. And the common Catholics would look for miracles naturally. But, uh, he was furious and he left the program. And uh, later when I came out, I could not come out. The church has brought a lot of people with sticks to attack me and they were waiting outside. And I could not really come out. I mean, it took four hours and later some back door was open and I was taken out safely. The Finnish government cooperated, of course, I got the visa very fast. They knew the situation and they helped me at that time. And I came to Helsinki, uh, stayed for two weeks, went to Poland, had the lecture tour. And meantime, I knew the situation was very, very dangerous in India. I came with a return ticket. Mm -hmm. And the return ticket was extended and extended. Meantime, one of my colleagues in Maharashtra state was shot dead. So next three months, I cancelled my ticket then. Because he was trying to, you know, we are planning my return back. And mm -hmm. he was one person. In, in charge of my returning and I mean he was shot dead he was on a morning walk somebody on a motorbike came and shot him dead two three months later another person who was a former vice chancellor he was shot dead I mean he was our, our national leader and another person I mean three three top leaders of our organization that shot dead so then I decided to stay on My father died early. My mother was ill. She was very old and she was dying. And she was very, very close and dear to me. And I mean, so my mother wanted to see me. It's a, it's a, it's a truce, a peace treaty for four days. They understand the language, I mean, what I wanted to say. So this guy said that, yes, I talked to the Archbishop and he agrees for that. We are very, very kind people. No problem. You are make an apology, not this for our four days, but we can withdraw everything. But I have to make an apology for all I have done. And I said, that's not possible. That's not a deal. I mean, I don't do, I, I, I mean, I took all the trouble because I don't want to apology, apologize to anybody because I stand by my principles. And you can correct me. You can convince me if I'm wrong, but you cannot force an apology from me. You, you mm. don't get it. My mother died after three, four days and I couldn't mm. see her. But she told my sister before dying, if he comes after apologizing to the Catholic Church, don't open the door for him. I don't want to see him. And she was a very strong person. I mean, the whole world knows that India is moving very fast towards right and right and mm -hmm. closer to becoming a Hindu mm -hmm. Iran. I mean, yeah. when it happens, no one knows. So therefore, things are dangerous. That's the political vacuum in India. There is no secure alternative. The big the centrist party, Congress, is getting weaker and weaker. So the other alternative is the left. And left is not acceptable in mainstream India. It's a small group only. There, there is no secular alternative. Nobody spoke about secularism in no. the last election. No, no single political party spoke about the challenges to secularism in the last election. So where is secular alternative? When there is no secular alternative and everybody is trying to be more Hindu than the other, 
because thinking that that's the trend in the country there's a potential danger of uh, india slowly slipping towards a hindu state see a lot of uh, i mean articles everywhere i mean telling that you should not depend only on this modern medicine there are people who are officially campaigning organizers there is a group of people called the naturopaths they believe that nature has solution for everything the virus is absolutely non existing there are people who speak about that publicly Th- this virus is a f- fake story there is no virus it's all for vaccine business you know what we lack is in india we have a lot of educated people the literacy is going up mm. but the lack of medical literacy is unbelievably low mm. very very low very highly educated people are also medically illiterate in india i i have not gone to india and uh, i living here and uh, i don't know when i will be able to go to india mm. uh, someday i would like to visit india but uh, but it could be a death trap for me that's what mm. i'm afraid of all my friends and everybody yeah. would suggest that if i go they will use that opportunity mm. to handle it